<laughs> David, I don't think you'll have to buy a drink in Norwich tonight after that result. Um, tremendous result, obviously, you can see what it means to the fans. We could see what it meant to you and your players at the final whistle. Just try and give, give us your assessment. OK, first of all, maybe i like to say if um, I've um, said in the past, uh, after our home games, that the atmosphere was uh, great or fantastic, uh, this was not the truth today. It was fantastic and uh, great. And today it was um, outstanding, best since I'm I'm here in charge, and uh, everyone has seen what this can make with a team. Uh, what this can, what what kind of a big influence this has in this big tackle in this 50-50 challenge where. At the end of the day, my players uh, were better. Uh, I had the feeling they wanted it more, in, especially in this in this 50-50 challenges. And um, the the workload which they put on the shift, uh, the fighting spirit, the attitude was unbelievable, uh, top class as well. And that you then obviously have beaten the league leaders, your biggest rival, deserved from my point of view because we had the clearer cut chances, uh, second half especially on the counter, we were a real threat to um, give so many clear cut chances away. I think it took till Chaplin's cutback situation, the second half, until they had the first uh, chance, especially a team which scored so many goals in this season. And to still be in the game and calm and do your job uh, after they made their, their super strength uh, substitutions, which they always have done, um, top, top performance. Uh, the only thing we should have killed the game earlier. This is maybe something which we uh, can criticize if we like to. And to be fair, I don't like to criticize anything today. Um, and we said this before, uh, today it's it's about us. It's it's Yes, it's a league leader. And yes, they are offensively top class, play good football. But let's make sure it's about us, how we play the game, how we approach the game. And it's about us. Um, we need points as well. Uh, we have targets as well. and. Uh, this is um, what the players wanted to show, and uh, to be fair, there was a big belief in this dressing room before the kickoff, and uh, to bounce back after not a good performance uh, against Leicester. Um, in this manner, is top class, uh, great afternoon. Did you? I mean, you said that's the best atmosphere. Would, would it be fair to say that's probably the best result in your time, given all the context you've, you've outlined there? Yeah, listen, I, I know where you come from. Obviously, to play against a league leader and the biggest rival, uh, have a, keep a clean sheet against the team which scored so many goals. So there were a lot of big headlines in this game which uh, the players totally deserved. Uh, that this are positive headlines today. And um, to show this togetherness and this spirit again, um, to bounce back, yeah, this this makes a makes it a, a, a big win, a very big win. But I said this before the game. At the end of the day, it's it's three points. And now when we collect them, I can't make it bigger um, because it's about this three points. And this is what we immediately said in the dressing room. Yes, enjoy, really enjoy this this experience to uh, today. Um, but one thing is totally clear as well. Um, on Tuesday we will go again. And uh, this is what I immediately said in the dressing room as well. And uh, for me, it's important that everybody felt today. Um, if you have such a special, um, extraordinary atmosphere, then you can maybe at the end of the season um, get some extraordinary special uh, over the line as well. And uh, this was a first experience. Hopefully, we will have a few more in the season. I mean, you talk about the atmosphere there, but it was it was a great shot. The TV pictures when the goal went in, it's got to the bench and. You did look the calmest man on the bench. I mean, what was going through your mind then? The truth is I had a good feeling when Nacho took the ball. It, seriously. Uh, and um, then I was not so really surprised that he scored. But uh, no, I, I as well um, had, a, had a big belief in this group after everything um, what, what I experienced. I think this group has a super strength. Uh, they went through the dark days. Uh, they got a lot of criticism, some of the criticism deserved, a lot of the criticism wasn't deserved and uh, they, they always uh, stuck together and fought together and um, if you went through the 
through the dark days um, and then you are on such a on such a run when you come from I don't know 17th in the table to attack now the playoff spot uh, with good performances as well this makes something with you and with um, your your belief your bravery uh, your commitment and uh, this is a super strength which uh, which this uh, group has and uh, which you need if you like to achieve something special and uh, obviously Everybody speaks about our run. Yes, uh, obviously we we are on a, on a on a on a good run. But this group had some setbacks as well. So we lost against Leeds, narrow defeat, bounced back. We lost against Borough, uh, a defeat which hurts a lot with this red card incident. Uh, bounced back, lost now against Leicester, uh, with not a good performance. Uh, got criticised, deserved criticised. Um, bounced back. Um, this is a super strength that you are able to uh, leave behind what you have done, make sure be focused on the next one and uh, show what you are capable of. And uh, this is something very, very special. And there's one player I really like to name, and I know he gets not a lot of headlines, but Danny Buff is uh, for me one of the best professionals I ever worked with. Um, even if he does not get the most game time, if you see how he is on it in every training session, every meeting, how he pushes. Uh, his competitors, um, this is an outstanding character uh, which we have in our dressing room and um, big credit to him. Just a couple more for me if I can. Just one in terms of the game, there was the two sort of very similar incidents with Josh Sargent when he's gone through in each half. Just what was your take on those two and, and obviously in both instances? Just... I haven't seen it back but from my view I think uh, the first one, first half, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, if this was a foul, uh, second half for me it was a crystal clear penalty and a red card, and uh, this is how, how I've seen it from my perspective. But I know the referee has a different uh, angle, different view. I'm not sure if I'm right, but this is how I've seen it. Uh, but to be fair, I think the referee has done in general, uh, apart from these two situations which I've seen different. I, I, as I said, I haven't seen it back. If I'm right, um, I think the referee has done a very good job because. Um, he had a clear, strict line how he wanted to approach this game and uh, you can go in one direction and you end up with 10, 15 yellow cards or in his direction and uh, this was uh, straight. Everybody was has known where he's, uh, where he's on and this is why I, I, um, I really have to praise his performance even if I have to say in these two situations I think... Um, um, he was not right, and we should have get a penalty and a red card. Uh, just final one for me. I mean, you quite clearly, and, and you will reiterate this now moving forward, it is three points. Nothing else is achieved beyond that. You can wrap all, obviously, the, the significance <coughs> of the derby. But that said, can you now maybe harness this psychologically? Because I'd imagine you know, those players and everybody connected to the club, we can see the scenes, what it means, what it means to the area. Can, can you actually harness that now for these remaining four or five league games? And hopefully then beyond. Yeah, obviously, every... Every positive uh, result, every positive performance, every positive response uh, from the stands, from, from from the media, whatever, pushes you, gives you confidence. Uh, they are humans. Uh, this is totally normal, and uh, especially at this of stage of the season, confidence plays a crucial part. Um, and now everyone has to play his part. And this is what I meant when I said uh, today. This is a. F this was an atmosphere where you can achieve something special and uh, we can't have this only once in the season. This makes no sense if you know what you can then produce together in terms of performances and result. And um, yeah, hopefully we see it a few more times uh, this season. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, you've alluded to this a bit, but the team and you have had a lot of criticism earlier in the season, yourself um, especially. Do you feel that this kind of result vindicates all, all the work you've done? and the effort that you personally have put in. Is it a personal vindication for you? What do you mean? In, in, in the, the, um, does it... Um, the fact that you had this incredible run and this result today, does it prove that the criticism of you earlier in the season was not, not justified? No, listen, at the end of the day, and uh, it's up to, you, to, to the guys who, who make their opinion. Uh, we played not good, yeah? we had not good results, good. Now you can sit there and uh, know why 
uh, and I think there were enough reasons why this happened. Now you can say, okay, was it the manager, uh, or are there maybe five, six, seven other reasons which are much bigger than the manager that the team was not able to perform uh, like they have done. Uh, now, obviously, uh, the team performs quite well, so it's the same. Is there a reason for, uh, and uh, is one of the reasons the manager, is he the biggest reasons, or are there as well four or five reasons? So I, from my perspective, think uh, you, you have to not only see the performance and the result, you, if there's a clear explanation and everybody has seen and everybody, now everybody says, ah, I've known why, uh, but at this time, everybody has said uh, it's because of him. So, come on. And now, I'm too long in this business that it really affects me, but it's... I said this before, and this is the, uh, the world where we live in everything... Uh, Uh, has to be new, has to get changed. Uh, you don't try to save something. You, oh, it doesn't work, take it. Uh, in, in, no, I don't speak about man uh, managers. I speak in general. So mobile phone, on next one. So whatever, this one, next one. So not try to fix it or whatever. And uh, because you know, um, okay, the Akku is not good. So I have to change Akku, but I can keep the mobile phone. So quite easy. But again, this is uh, the job of the people who um, make their opinions, um, speak about their opinions, not much. Don't okay, David, um, boy of science, everyone sees him as, a, as an attacking player. Today, I'm sure the fans saw another side of him because he was so industrious today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, back credit to him. Uh, we said this, that uh, he plays a crucial part that our uh, left back, Sam, uh, is not alone. Uh, he should not defend uh, one against one. He always should double up um, because obviously one of the biggest threat uh, are the wide players, are the wide areas. You should not give them the opportunity to come into the dangerous zone where they can create their cutback situations. And uh, um, yeah, he and Gabi on the other side as well, um, together with Jack Stacey, uh, defended the wide area very, very well for uh, a long, long period of the game. Yeah, David, was that one of the shortcomings at Leicester in the second half, those sort of wider areas? Um, I would say this was the end product. Uh, the reason is in ball possession, we have not done what we wanted to do. We wanted to be much more brave, much more positive in ball possession. We wanted to um, have a much better link up. Uh, but if you don't have, uh, then you drop deeper, 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 and then you end up uh, conceding maybe the big switches, and then you can be in trouble in the wide areas. And uh, on the other hand, we have to give credit to Leicester as well. I think they have some top class uh, wide players as well. But um, it was more the end product uh, that we had struggled in the wide areas against Leicester rather than what we normally had to do beforehand and then we will not end up in this situation. And this is exactly um, what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, this is how, how, we, how we judged it and how we, we've seen the game. That's fine, that's a long time ago now. Um, I did want to ask you, I mean, you're an experienced manager. This kind of run, I guess, momentum reminds me of the way your Huddersfield side went up previously. I'm sure you've had other spells as well. So can you draw on what that experience has been like in terms of sustaining momentum and what to prioritize managing a group over that period? To be fair, Huddersfield was totally different because there was everything from May more or less uh, day one till day, the last day of the season uh, positive. Um, this season totally different. Much more uh, issues to solve. Um, all the atmosphere, expectation, criticize the board, criticize the sporting director, criticize the owner, criticize the manager. Boy, this was totally different uh, this season. Um, but uh, what is the same? Uh, is this togetherness of the dressing room. And uh, a dressing room, as I said, who is so tied together can achieve something special. But unfortunately, they can't do it alone. They only can do it um, with, and I said this uh, more often, uh, with the supporters on it as well, if you like to achieve something special. Today we had it. And for me, as a leader, it's all about give the direction, make sure everybody is calm, uh, does his job, um, beliefs in uh, what we are doing and this is exactly what the players have done so uh, at the end of the day let's uh, let's speak about the truth um, so far we have done nothing 
67 points uh, will not be enough to uh, end in the playoffs and uh, maintain the chance uh, for promotion. And uh, this is how I judge it. Great day, yes, great result, yes, great performance, yes, uh, good run, super to bounce back after Leicester's defeat. But 76 games will not be enough to come into the playoffs. And uh, this is why I will enjoy this evening as well. But uh, tomorrow morning, when we train again, we will get uh, the focus on Tuesday and then we will go again. And this is exactly what I said to the players uh, because um, yeah, we have, we have targets and uh, obviously moments like today help to keep the blade spinning. And this is exactly what is important. I mean, there, there is a chance that you could play for Switch again this season in the playoffs. Does, does this sort of result give you a psychological sort of advantage or, or you know, make you psychologically stronger? if that challenge comes along. Yes. And um, in terms of, I mean, obviously, you, you know, you, you're looking to be fifth or sixth probably, you know, if you were in the playoffs, and obviously someone's going to drop out, or two teams are obviously going to drop out if you're fantastic this season. Does that, does that help you that a team that perhaps will be feeling low, having dropped out, and then you're, you've got momentum going into it, that actually that, that would go in your favour? Is it important to keep this momentum going? Yeah, to, to be totally honest, um, this is not my issue, not my problem. Um, but if I try to sit on, on on the chair of the team which had an unbelievable season, and then they do, do not do the automatic promotion, they have to uh, play the playoffs where then everyone has a 25% chance uh, to get promoted. Um, uh, where you think, okay, I could be on the beach uh, with the Caipirinha and, and enjoy um, and reflect the promotion season, uh, but I have to play now the playoffs. Obviously, it's something totally different, like for a team like us, which chased the playoffs the whole season and um, is uh, over the moon to be in the playoffs. Uh, and uh, yeah, this this is this is. This is different for sure. This is different. Uh, will this uh, count then at the end? I don't know. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you everybody.